Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is Ash, and today is a bit different episode. Uh, by the time you hear this, I will be on my way to San Diego, California to speak on Bitcoin at the FinCon Expo. It's a financial conference that if you keep up with the show, you'll know that I'm going to be the first cryptocurrency speaker ever at the FinCon Financial Conference. So it's really exciting. Today's episode is a short episode where I was interviewed on the Entrepreneur Power Hour. It's a similar podcast to what I'm trying to do here. Basically, find freedom in your life by becoming an entrepreneur. And I'm actually the one being interviewed. So the tables have turned and I'm the one getting questions asked. And it was a lot of fun. I will apologize in advance. The audio quality isn't quite what my listeners are used to, but just stick through it. It's fairly short and you'll get a bit more glimpse of who I am and why entrepreneurship in my mind is so tightly aligned with freedom. We discuss a couple topics, most notably who some of my entrepreneurial role models are and who I've learned from which some of them you may guess and some of them you will definitely not guess. Uh, I go into a bit of detail regarding each one of these people and the impact that they've had on my life and why. We'll return next week with our regularly scheduled interviews where I'm the interviewer um, after I get back from San Diego with plenty of updates on what I learned at this financial conference and how I felt that the presentation on Bitcoin went over with a group of people who are young, intelligent content creators in the financial space. But if you can believe it, for some reason, they're still not familiar with Bitcoin. That will change come Friday after my presentation. I hope that I'm able to reach a lot of people and really help spread the message on why Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and blockchains are absolutely essential for freedom, for self-governance, for a voluntary democracy, and for money that we can depend on and trust because it's transparency and it's open source nature. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour podcast, where we interview a different entrepreneur on their expertise and immerse ourselves in the power of their journey. Are you ready to be educated, inspired, and enlightened? Well, you've come to the right place. This is the Entrepreneur Power Hour podcast, hosted by Kareem Mays and Chris Peters. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour podcast, where we interview a different individual on their expertise that they bring to the world. Today, we have Ash Whitener of Liberty Entrepreneurs. He has an awesome radio show that brings liberty with a positive message, which is hard to find these days. Ash, how are you today? Hey, Kareem. Thanks, man. Doing great. Thank you so much for inviting me on. So, Ash, how did you become an entrepreneur? I, I want to know because I'm really intrigued by the work you do. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. You know, looking back on my life and specifically my childhood, I I think that I had a very independent and entrepreneurial nature from a very early age. I mean, I was the kid getting in trouble in elementary school for selling airheads and blow pops, which back in the 80s, those were the two hottest candies on the market. Uh, I also had a countless lemonade stands and car washes in the summers. I had a small landscaping business whenever I was in middle school and, you know, pretty much my entire life I've been an entrepreneur. So what I'm doing now and like being an entrepreneur as an adult, I would say that that really started in 2012 whenever I quit my engineering job in Raleigh, North Carolina and decided to move to the Caribbean, specifically uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines to help a guy named Peter Schiff start his offshore bank, Euro Pacific Bank. Ever since then, uh, I've fallen out of love with the mainstream liberty movement, and I pursue full-time entrepreneurship both in my own life and also trying to connect with people around the world who are entrepreneurs because I believe that that is being an entrepreneur is the best way to create personal freedom in your life compared to anything else I've ever experienced. 
And I would totally agree with you because being an entrepreneur is what actually makes a country strong, what actually changes the world. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's essential that if we're entrepreneurs, then we find a way to move the world forward. And I've, I've heard a lot of your podcasts. I saw that you were on Anarchast. I saw you did a lot of work with other individuals in that space. And I want to ask about some of the highlights of your career. Have you brought anybody realization that the Liberty Movement could be positive or did you open up anybody's eyes with maybe a Roger Veer episode or Anarchast? I know that's how I learned about you. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that you know my main topic or my main theme right now is trying to help my Liberty brethren understand that politics is a fool's game and it's only going to exist for as long as it doesn't have have to compete in the free market. And so what I like to do is I like to interview people who are competing against government services. That's why I pay so much attention to cryptocurrencies because they're competing against the monetary and fiscal policies of the US dollar or the euro or the yen or the pound and stuff like that. But I like to think that people in my audience are starting to agree with me or figure out that entrepreneurship is the path where you have the most control over your own life, you and with that control comes a sense of freedom. And freedom is the biggest thing that anybody can ask for. That's what that will make the world better. That will make the world in a state that maybe we've never seen before of untold prosperity. And that's why I get people like you, Micah, uh, Chris, other people together so we can change this world. And I want to ask, can you give some tips for people who might start doing what you're doing, working with crypto and learning about how to start their own radio show? Yeah, so as far as starting your own radio show, you know, I, I never considered myself a radio host. Um, I started a podcast because I, I've been a blogger for years. I, I was a blogger in 2005 and six, seven and eight. And I was blogging just my thoughts and my perspective as I grew and evolved in the Liberty movement and evolved becoming a, a more free and sovereign person myself. But what I noticed is that podcasts are replacing our standard print material. People want to hear someone speak because they get the sense of energy and passion from someone whenever they hear them speak. It's much more difficult to recognize or evaluate that energy and passion through someone's writing. It's not impossible. My friend Eric Voorhees is a wonderful writer, one of the best writers I've ever read, and he has a very high skill of sending his, his message and the energy behind his message out through the written word. My idea is that podcasts are one of the best ways to to get that message across. But um, Mike, uh, Kareem, I think I forgot the second half of your question, buddy. I'm sorry. No, it was fine. I, that was totally correct. And actually, Ron Paul inspired me to go in the liberty movement. And I was just really asking for some tips and stuff. And you oh, did. Oh, right. Well, I've got one more tip, and this is something that I just heard my buddy Isaac Morehouse from. Uh, he has a company called Praxis, which is uh, experience-based education. I interviewed him back probably about episode 22 or so, but instead of going to public school, he's building a system where it's more of a mentor or internship based. But he said something this past week that really caught my attention. And it was something similar to the following. Don't worry about finding yourself until you know how to work hard and you've identified something you're passionate about. Because with finding something you're passionate about, like freedom for me, and knowing how to work hard, knowing how to work online, knowing how to work remotely, knowing how to become a good manager, knowing how to delegate, knowing how to prioritize your time and stay self-motivated and independent, without your ability to understand and appreciate at least one thing you're passionate about, and knowing how to work in order to start putting the pieces together to ob t obtain and achieve that passion. Don't work. Don't sit around and worry about, you know, what's my purpose in life. Well, you might be missing out on your purpose by asking yourself that. Yeah, definitely. Because one thing I can lose is I just tried to make money when I started. I said, no, I have to have things that I need. I can stay up till 4 a.m. 
and then work the whole day, come home from work and keep doing it again. And even on a lack of sleep, I know I'm going to get stuff done. And if you don't have that passion, it's very hard to actually succeed. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. And I needed inspirations from different people. Some came from my parents. Some came from, obviously, Dr. Ron Paul. And in the crypto space, Roger Veer inspired me to start looking at the Bitcoin. And I want to ask you, who are some of the people that have inspired you to do all of the great things you've done? Oh, man, I, I could list a couple. Can, can I list like four or five? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I would say one person. I, I actually graduated with an electrical engineering degree from North Carolina State University. And I learned about Nikola Tesla, who was a great inventor and engineer. And he wasn't the best businessman, but he never gave up. He, he knew what he was building was great. He knew it was better than DC current. You know, Nikola Tesla is creating alternating current, AC versus DC. And he, people were, were talking crap about him because Edison had produced DC current. And no, nobody believed this guy for a long time, but he knew the value of what he was building, even, even though all of these fools didn't understand it yet. It reminds me of Satoshi Nakamoto in one of his uh, forum posts. He said, I'm sorry, but if you don't understand this, I don't have time to teach it to you, right? So understanding your value and the value in what you're producing and not really worrying when fools tell you no, I think that's a big part of being a successful businessman and entrepreneur. I would say another person that's greatly impacted my entrepreneurial uh, desire and understanding, and, and he would never think that I would, I would say this, but is uh, my buddy, Adrian Murray, who I literally started Your Pacific Bank with. He, he's uh, one of my only peers at the bank, and he's a really great guy. He also helped start uh, eProf.com, which Liberty.me uses, or at least used to use, for their lectures. It's, uh, it's a type of webinar software. Uh, he's really helped me understand what it means to put in real big days and stay focused and stay organized. Um, I would say that Steve Jobs was a big influence on me as well. You know, Steve Jobs isn't known to be a very big people person. He had his own way of doing things. He wasn't afraid of telling people no. Uh, when people challenged him, he wasn't afraid to stand up for himself and tell them that they were wrong or, you know, that they didn't understand what he was trying to do. He built things outside of the box in a time where everyone just knew that Microsoft Windows was, was going to rule the roost. He started building a company based off of a different philosophy uh, where hardware and software were married. And we see it now, it's obvious that yeah. Apple is, is a very successful company. Oh, and yeah. I've, got to, I've got to throw out one more shout out um, <laughs> sure. to, my, to my buddy, Eric Voorhees. He has been uh, a big influence on my life not only in his ability uh, to start companies and to hire staff and organize companies, but also his vision when it comes to freedom, economics, money, non-aggression. You know, he's got, he's got a real full and complete package of, of liberty and freedom, and I always appreciate watching his companies get built and reading his articles. But I, I would say those are the guys that have been of most influence to me. Where can we find you at? I know you have Liberty Entrepreneurs. Is there any other place you want people to contact you at? Yeah, I would say Liberty Entrepreneurs is probably the best. Uh, I mean, we're on all major social media, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, the Twitter handle is at Liberty E Podcast. Uh, our web, my website is libertyentrepreneurs.com. Again, I post new episodes every Wednesday with a liberty-oriented entrepreneur and get their story about how they are actively creating a lifestyle of freedom and flexibility for themselves. So go check it out. Send me a message if you want to hear from anyone. Send me a, a private message, a direct message on Twitter, or you can email me directly at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. That's it. All right, guys, you had, I'm your host, Kareem Mays, and today we had Ash Whitener from Liberty Entrepreneurs. He helps Liberty, and he also advocates for a cryptocurrency, the 
currency of the future. That's what money is coming to little communities of people working together. So you can find him at Liberty Entrepreneurs. And once we get this all wrapped up, we will have it on the Entrepreneur Power Hour Podcast.com and up on Liberty Entrepreneurs. So there you go, the Entrepreneur Power Hour by Kareem Mays. I hope you got a bit more insight on who I am and why I'm doing Liberty Entrepreneurs and why I hammer home so often the importance and significance of entrepreneurship as a tool for your personal journey towards freedom. Again, tune in next week for a more normal episode. I'll be back with tons of updates and exciting information on my Bitcoin presentation at the FinCon conference. And until then, keep building freedom.